Got it? Okay, right? Hey everyone, good afternoon and welcome to Trail Talk. It's good to be with you after we had to miss out yesterday, but I'm Edie and I'm coming to you live from the Chuck Wagon Studio. How about that? We haven't been here in a while. Uh, right here at the Chisholm Trail Heritage Center in Duncan, Oklahoma. And I am pleased to introduce you today to a new friend of mine named Ron Wilson. And uh, I came to meet Ron through our director, Scott Matelko. They are both members of the International Chisholm Trail Association. Did I get that right, Ron? Exactly. Okay. So uh, anyway, Ron is uh, a rancher, a cowboy poet, a poet lariat. I'm not mispronouncing it. <laughs> That's how what he described himself as, and he's a rural advocate, and so he's got a lot of really, um, I think, a lot of interesting things that he's going to be able to share with us today. Plus, he's going to share some cowboy poetry, and we all love a good round of cowboy poetry, right? So, um, Ron, how long have you been a member of the um, the Chisholm Trail Association? I've probably been a member of uh, the International Chisholm Trail Association just four or five years. Uh -huh. uh, the association was started back in about 2000, as I recall. So uh, it's been going for some time. Wow. And I've enjoyed being a part of it lately. So um, what, what piqued your interest to join that? Are you kind of a Chisholm Trail buff, history buff, or what? I'm definitely a Western history buff. I, I really enjoy... Uh, Western history and learning about the Chisholm Trail. We live on the family ranch outside of Manhattan, Kansas. So the Chisholm Trail does not come to or particularly near our ranch, uh, but it comes to uh, Abilene, Kansas, about 40 miles west of us. But as a Western history bus, it was really along the Chisholm Trail that the, the legend of the cowboy came to life. It was in that post-Civil War era of the cattle drives, which uh, where the, the, the legend of the cowboy really took form and, and, and was celebrated and expanded and interpreted and glorified. Uh, right, lives on today, right? <laughs> on today. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I guess, do you consider yourself a cowboy? Absolutely. We live on working, working cattle ranch and, and run cows and horses. Uh, so there's no question about it. But I tell you, I have the highest respect for those cowboys in history and the work that they did, the challenges they took on to uh, go up the Chisholm Trail. That was, was pretty amazing. Right. So, um, okay, you're a cowboy poet. So, um, I would love to hear one of your poems. So introduce us to the first one that you're gonna to share today. Well, I, this is a, a short poem and uh, uh, th there, are, there are serious poems and there are humorous poems. Uh, and Jay Snyder, who was on a previous trail talk, uh, right. is one of the best anywhere. Um, and we, we love Jay. <laughs> he's, he's, a, he's a great one. Um, this uh, particular poem is uh, one that I wrote uh, for our friends in Texas. It's called, What's in a Name? Okay. A stranger rode into town wearing a big 10 gallon hat, tied up his horse at the hitch and rail near where the sheriff sat. The sheriff said, howdy stranger, welcome to our town. What's the handle we should call you if you're gonna be around? Well, you can call me Tex, the stranger stopped to say. Oh, replied the sheriff, you come from Texas way? Oh, replied the stranger, I'm a Louisiana man. The sheriff said in puzzlement, I just don't understand. And then he asked the question, which obviously came next. If you're from Louisiana, why do you go by Tex? The stranger said, well, it's very simple, if you please. The truth is, I didn't want anybody calling me Louise. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good one. Yes, I'll give you a applause for that. That's that's a good one. 
Well, um, so now a lot of people use uh, life experiences when they write poems. Was this a real experience you had? I can't say that one was a real experience, but Edie, you're absolutely right that there is no substitute for the real life experience. Uh, that's what uh, I think makes the best in cowboy poetry. <laughs> some days, some days after a bad day out on the ranch, we'll end up with a statement like, "Well, if nothing else, we can get a cowboy poem out of this." <laughs> Your silver lining for the day, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so now, Ron, I was reading on your website, which is bronzecowboypoetry.com. Is that right? Right. Um, and uh, I saw that you were you were actually born and raised on the ranch where you live now. Is that correct? Um, I grew up on the ranch, yes. Okay. And then you moved away. You went to Washington, D.C. That is a fact. After I got out of college, I had a really unusual opportunity. Uh, I was the assistant for agriculture to uh, one of our senators, uh, Nancy Casabon of Kansas. And that was a long, long time ago. So I spent about five, six years back east, married a, or met an Illinois farm girl and married, came back to Kansas. And now we're, we're on the ranch where we live today. And our kids are the third generation on the ranch. Well, it, it's, uh, well, I guess you were working in a, the agricultural part of Washington, D.C., as far as what you focused on. So um, were you always pull, like drawn to go, go back to Kansas? Was that something you knew you always wanted to do, was go back to the ranch? Yes, there's definitely a, a pull to come home. And, and it was, you know, farm boy in the big city when I was back there. But as a history buff, you know, I'm a Western history buff and an American history buff. And mm -hmm. so it was great to see that and observe uh, Washington, D.C. and really soak in our, our nation's history. Um, my wife and I kind of made a pledge that we knew we were going to move back to the Midwest. We weren't absolutely certain it would be back to the ranch. But we said, uh, you know, we won't be here forever. Every month, let's go see a different monument. Let's go explore a different part of Washington. Um, that was time well spent then. That yeah. is, I mean, wow, that the Mecca of our nation's history right there. That's, that's a great place. I can't even imagine being able to live there and get all those experiences. So, um, so five or six years in Washington, DC, and then you came back to Kansas after that? Yes, I actually went to the Farm Credit Bank in Wichita um, and worked in their public affairs shop for a while and then had the opportunity to come back up to the Manhattan area. We do rural development work um, for the state of Kansas uh, and, and live out on the ranch. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, just a, a country boy at heart, I'm hearing from you. Uh, did you miss the ranch? We absolutely miss the ranch. Um, there's just no substitute for the wide open spaces and having a good horse and, and raising a family uh, in, uh, in a rural setting. And, and I felt that my, my Washington DC experience, it was a long time ago now, but I, when I learned that the International Chisholm Trail Association was working toward a federal congressional designation as a national historic trail, I thought, well, maybe this is an area where I can try to help. And so, um, uh, and, and I'd, I'd like to say a word about that. Edie. Right, absolutely, please do. Um, this sounds very interesting. Um, so the, the Chisholm Trail, of course, goes back to the post-Civil War era. Right. And, um, uh, there's the Santa Fe Trail and the Oregon Trail and other famous trails. Those have both been designated by Congress as National Historic Trails. And only the Congress can designate a National Historic Trail. That's the only way that designation is achieved. Hmm. The 150th anniversary of the, the beginning of the Chisholm Trail was in 2017. And there were a lot of events happening up and down the trail. And in advance of that, uh, several legislators worked on uh, achieving the designation. 
And I really wanted to credit, uh, this goes back to 2009, so it's a long time ago, and Congressman Tom Cole, who represents Southwest Oklahoma, yeah. and Senator Jim Inhofe were among the authors of the legislation that called for the Department of Interior and National Park Service to study the feasibility of designating the Chisholm uh, as a National Historic Trail. Um, and wrapped into that was the Western Trail, sometimes called the Great Western Trail, that goes further west, uh, up through Dodge City and to, up to Nebraska. Uh, that, uh, that legislation did pass uh, to do the study. And after uh, a great deal of extensive study, the National Park Service found that yes, the Chisholm and the Western Trails meet the criteria to be designated as National Historic Trails. Number one, they were nationally significant. Number two, they were authentic. There really was a Chisholm Trail. There really was a Western Trail. And number three, they had a significant impact on the nation and in our nation's culture. And as I mentioned, the cowboy culture really came to life in that time. So um, there was a 2015 study that recommended uh, that, the, that the trails be designated and and finally, in 2019, that study was released uh, uh, from the Department of Interior. Um, and then in 2020, and again this year, congressmen in Kansas and Oklahoma have introduced legislation that would designate the trails as National Historic Trails. And again, I want to credit Congressman Tom Cole, Congressman Frank Lucas, who joined our Kansas members of Congress in introducing that legislation. So that's something that we're working on now. One point I did want to make, Edie, uh -huh. this is a national designation. It is not a federal park. It is not a federal land acquisition. It is not a federal land grab. It's not federal control. Uh -huh. It's really recognition of this history. Uh, in fact, the, and there's a lot of concern, and I share it as a rancher, about federal lands and, and more government control. Um, the, the budget for federal land acquisition in this proposal is zero. It's, wow. it's really not about that. It's more about a national recognition of the great history of the Chisholm Trail. Right, and as it should be. You know, I mean, far too much land, far, far too long to try to grab all, I mean, that wouldn't even be a realistic thing to me. So uh, that sounds very exciting, but I guess I am puzzled. Well, I mean, true to, uh, can you hear those, that whistling in the background? Yeah. We have some um, flute players. I think they just bought some new flutes at the uh, gift shop they're performing for us. <laughs> so viewers, if you're hearing that, we don't have whistling doors, but it's, we have some flute players here today. <laughs> Um, anyway, uh, I was just thinking, um, you know, true to form, it takes the government a long time to do anything. <laughs> if this has been going on for 12 years, that's a, that's a really long time. Um, do you know why, uh, it was, had to be introduced twice and it didn't, was, did it never make a vote the first time or? In, in 2020, it was introduced probably the end of November. So it was right at the end of the legislative session. Oh, okay. Even the sponsors pretty much recognized there wouldn't be time for it to get through in 2020. Uh, in 2021, um, it was the legislation was introduced on April 14 and it's now in committee and we're hoping for committee action on that. But politics okay. is so polarized these days. Yeah, and we're gonna pull it through, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I certainly hope. So are there things that the, or the association is doing to try to help, you know, kind of push it through? Are there, are there things people can do to encourage the legislators to get it on through the committee and for a vote? Sure. Um, we, uh, the association has been in contact with all the members of the Oklahoma uh, congressional delegation. And uh, I must say a word of thanks to Lieutenant Governor Matt Pinnell, who spoke to our Chisholm Trail Conference, who's actively supported this. Um, and I mentioned the congressman locally who have supported this. Um, 
you know, it's tough to get to the top of the agenda with all the hot button issues that are going on in, in DC. But, you know, we welcome people to, to, uh, to go to Chisholm Trail, ASSN.com is actually the association website um, and you know, uh, join and support and contact legislators. Uh, um, right, I did see on the page, the International Chisholm Trail Association page that there is, uh, I can't remember what the heading was, but every legislator from uh, Kansas and Oklahoma, I noticed, I read through the Oklahoma list, everybody was on that. Um, I saw of some Texas, uh, names of some Texas legislature, uh, legislators as well. So, um, you know, if you're watching from one of the, these states, go on there and see who you need to reach out to. Would, you, would that be uh, the right way to say that, Ron? Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely, and and really, in, in Texas, Texas is such a huge state. Yes. Uh, we need uh, more grassroots support in the state of Texas. I'm proud of Oklahoma. I'm proud of Kansas. Uh, our our folks, our legislators, have have uh, stepped up in a lot of ways. We have some work to do in the Senate. Uh, I think maybe the House. Maybe we'll we'll try to move this first. But um, um, we we welcome everyone's everyone's support. All right, that's great to know. Well, how about we lighten this up a little bit? You got another poem for us? Oh, I'll do another poem. Um, uh, this one isn't necessarily lighter. Uh, this is, uh, but this is a poem that I wrote uh, for the, the 150th anniversary. Oh, wow, that sounds great. It's not politics though. Anything's lighter than politics, so. <laughs> <laughs> This is the historic Chisholm Trail. In the annals of our nation stands this mortal tale, the remarkable migration known as the Chisholm Trail. More than 150 years ago, war stopped to our relief, but for our nation yet to grow, the nation needed beef. Then came a man named Joe McCoy, his visionary plan to bring alive the great cowboy and change our history's span. He saw where railroads sent their trains, his vision was foreseen, Move Texas cattle through the plains, clear up to Abilene. The railroads built the stockyards here to take the herds of beasts and ship them on from the frontier to markets in the east. In Texas, longhorns ranging free were worth four bucks a head, but in the cities they could be 10 times that, people said. So Texas drovers heard those words and chose to venture forth. They gathered up vast cattle herds and bravely brought them north. Then Jesse Chisholm traded goods to Indian tribes down south his wagons rolled through plains and woods in times of rain and drought. The drovers learned to follow trails where Chisholm's wagons passed. They led them through frontier travails to journey's end at last. With that, the Chisholm Trail was blazed into our nation's story, and generations now have raised the legend into glory. Those cowboys tamed the wild, wild west with bravery unsparing. They earned their place in history's quest through courage, brave, and daring. Today in our mind's eye, we see the spectacle they brought of cowboys ranging wild and free in spite of danger strut. The ball of steer, the neigh of horse, the sizzle of a brand would help set the stage for this route's course on up to Kansas land. The story of the Chisholm Trail shows brave determination that helped these heroes to prevail and build a growing nation. So now we pause to celebrate and honor without fail the vision which they did create the historic Chisholm Trail. Oh, wow. And that's really based on the true story of the history of the Chisholm Trail. Um, exactly. exactly. We were uh, in a meeting yesterday and talking about a way to describe, you know, tell the story of the Chisholm Trail. And boom, I wish I had had that right. <laughs> I would have shared that poem. That was fantastic. Very well put together. Oh, that, that was awesome. Um, do you do you have your poems published? Yes, uh, I self-published some booklets. Um, and and bronzecowboypoetry.com is indeed the website. Uh, uh, and so, you know, we have fun, fun doing this. 
I, I wrote a poem that's a tribute to the Longhorn cattle, which okay. were really fundamental to, uh, of course, that's what this was all about. It was about moving those cattle to markets. And uh, uh, I'd be glad to share that poem. Right? Oh, I'd, I'd love it. Please do. The poem is called Horns, Hides, and Herds. Let's go back to the year of 1865 to learn of the origin of the great cattle drives. The Civil War had come to an end and soldiers returned to their families and friends. But while the men were gone to the war, you see, Longhorn cattle in Texas were ranging free. Texas buyers would pay only $4 a head for the beasts, but those critters would bring $40 a head back east. So they gathered up those cattle and drove them up the Chisholm Trail to Kansas, where they could go east by rail. Those cattle had horns, sharp and strong, of course, which could kill an unwary cowboy or horse. Young cowboys were hired to make those rides and deliver the cattle to their beef and their hides. Young drovers saddled up and rode their horses forth and drove those huge herds of cattle north. Some three million head came to Kansas in that way and launched the legend of the cowboy, which we celebrate today. But the history of the West would not have earned those words without those longhorn cattle and their horns Hides and herds. Ah, oh, very good. Very good. And I enjoy uh, going into schools and telling kids, as I know you do great educational programming there at the, the, the Chisholm Trail Heritage Center and trying to explain to kids what it was really like in those trail drive days and, mm -hmm. and you know, to say to those kids, all right, you know, imagine a bunch of high school age typically boys, here's 2,000 head of cattle, there's a few head of horses, we want you to move those cattle hundreds of miles across the wilderness by yourself. Right, yeah, you and your horse and your saddle. <laughs> oh. You know, good luck. <laughs> it was an All amazing right. accomplishment and it really captured the imagination of the American people and it's been glorified by Hollywood and you know, expanded upon by, uh, by uh, authors and, and oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, movies, uh, rodeos, you know, sprang up from all of that and just uh, so much culture um, that has just really stayed with us all these years. So much that we can, uh, so much of that we attribute to the, the trail drives. It's just such a great part of history. Um, and, you know, uh, it, it's not, you know, it was like a 20 minute, I'm uh, 20 minute, 20 year part. You know, it's not that long whenever you think about history as a whole. 20 years is, is really a very short period of time, but the significance of all of it is just, it's astounding how, how it really has left its mark. Um, what, a, what a great point uh, that for such a short period of time, the impact that would have. I mean, the Cowboys become a, a lasting international icon. Exactly. A uh, symbol of America. And it goes back to uh, and the active trail drive period, you know, was, was less than, you know, within that 20 year time span. So. Right, yeah. Remarkable the impact that it's had. Right, kind of impressive, isn't it? <laughs> really? <laughs> and it was, you know, it was, I mean, of course the cattle in Texas were going across the country, but it was really kind of an isolated part of the nation as well, where the, the cattle drives actually took place. So I don't know, it's kind of interesting to think about it in those terms. I don't know if I ever really had before, but that's, that is interesting. So um, if someone wanted to uh, get their hands on some of your poetry, can they order directly from your uh, website? Um. Yes, at the very least, there's a uh, uh, address on there where a person can place uh, an order uh, and uh, uh, and get copies of my my cowboy poetry books. Awesome. We we will put um, the website in the comments. Um, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. It the it, it's already there. <laughs> oh, okay. Your website's in the comments. So that very good. Hopefully, we can. Uh, some people want to read some more of those. So, um, you, uh, so you're a, a rural advocate, 
you're a rancher, you're a cowboy poet. Do you, um, you, you mentioned going to schools, do you travel? I know um, Jay has talked about a lot of um, kind of cowboy festival kind of things where a, a lot of cowboy poetry is shared. Do you participate in those? Sure. Um, and of course, 2020 was a different year altogether. Um, but things are reopening and there are more of those gatherings happening. And actually, uh, I, I chair the, the Kansas Cowboy Poetry Contest. And we're just in the process of announcing that contest. And it will be a virtual contest. Uh, for 10 years, we had a you know, contest where uh, cowboy poets would come together and go through a qualifying round and, and then compete in the finals. Uh, mm -hmm. Last year and again this year, we're doing this virtually. So uh, there's another another website, cowboypoetrycontest.com, uh, where a person could, uh, uh, they don't have to travel, uh, but they need to write an original cowboy poem and then record it on the video. And that video will be posted on the website and evaluated by judges. And there's also an opportunity for people to like it. Uh, and that's factored in the People's Choice kind of award. Uh, so um, if you enjoy cowboy poetry, uh, I encourage you to do that. And if you want to take your hand at writing cowboy poetry, this is a perfect opportunity. Uh, write a Western themed poem, just have it recorded on your phone, post it on YouTube. If you're like me, you might have to find a teenager who's smart enough to figure out how to do it. Uh, and uh, and then be part of the Kansas Cowboy Poetry Contest. Okay, wow, that sounds great. So are you ready to announce the dates when the submissions can start or is that still? It, it's it's open as of now. Um, okay. We have set July 23 as the deadline. So folks have just a month to okay. uh, get to writing a cowboy poem and and then uh, uh, and there's, there's actually a way to enter uh, online. That, that it is all online. So, so there's a, a place, that website, cowboypoetrycontest.com, where mm -hmm. people can, can enter. And then uh, uh, there's a spot to, to post the video. And that needs to be done by uh, July 23. So this time. Right. Okay, July 23rd of 2021 is the deadline on that, you guys. This is, that's pretty exciting stuff. I, I, and so, how can people view it? You go there and you just want to view, and so then you can watch the uh, recordings that are sent in? Yeah, uh, at a later time, we'll be posting those for viewing by the public. Uh, oh, okay. So there will need to be a link. That's when, you, that's when you can like them and all of that. So we'll be at, we could go on it after the deadline of July 23rd. Right. Okay, awesome. We'll be looking forward to that too. Um, Ron, listen, it has been so fun uh, talking to you today. I'm so glad to finally meet you. And um, man, the everything that the association is doing and trying to get this legislation passed, that is so exciting. You know, as, a, as someone who loves to talk about the Chisholm Trail and gets to because I get to hang out at the Heritage Center a lot. Um, I'm very excited about that. And um, I, I wanna encourage you viewers to please reach out and, and let's, let's help get that thing passed. So um, I understand that you have written a special poem for the Chisholm Trail Heritage Center and Garris Gallery of the American West. Now, is that right? Yes. Uh, it, 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 be true. And I, I enjoy taking this on as a, as a challenge to uh, to write a, a customized poem, a personalized poem, and I is, enjoy doing that. Is this the debut? This is the grand premiere. Woohoo! You're hearing it first, right here on Trail Talk, guys. <laughs> well, Ron, would you share that poem with us now? I would be delighted, and, and let me make a couple of uh, uh, comments uh, okay. uh, first. Uh, about 50 miles due west of Duncan, Oklahoma, there's a little bitty town called Faxon, Oklahoma, mm -hmm. and that's where my father was born. So uh, I, uh, I, that's something that I appreciate about the, that country. Um, 
And more uh, importantly, a couple of years ago, my wife and I had the opportunity to visit the Chisholm Trail Heritage Center there in Duncan. And let me tell you, we were blown away. Uh, that is a fantastic resource, wonderful museum, inside and out. I mean, the, the displays outside and setting are impressive. And then the interactive uh, uh, exhibits inside. And uh, I, I don't think anybody shares the Chisholm, Chisholm Trail story better for the, the size of the community than, than the good folks in Duncan. So, so my hat's off to you. And here's the poem that I wrote for, for the Chisholm Trail Heritage Center. Thanks for the chance to be part of Trail Talk, where stories of the cattle drives are considered bedrock. The center celebrates the Chisholm Trail today in an absolutely outstanding way. High quality exhibits, videos, and guest interaction provide a high level of visitor satisfaction. The center tells the true story of the old cattle ride and brings the era of the old cowboy alive. The center hosts many events throughout the year, educating youth and adults about the frontier. The Garris Gallery of the, Gallery of the American West features excellent artists, as we have expressed. In front of the building, a magnificent statue in bronze depicts cowboys and longhorns, the Chisholm Trail's icons. The Heritage Center is a wonderful facility and a great asset for the Duncan community. So come see Western history at its best at the Chisholm Trail Heritage Center and Garris Gallery of the American West. Yay! I think we need to borrow that for a commercial. <laughs> that, that was so great, Ron. Thank you so much. I just appreciate the the kind words and the the poem. That was that was really something special. So nice of you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I appreciate the great way that you represent the Chisholm Trail share the true and authentic story of this remarkable history. So I'm, I'm mighty glad to, to work with your director, Scott Matelko, and, and I encourage you all to keep up your great work there. Well, thank you very much. And you know, we, I couldn't be more pleased than to have had you as a guest, a guest today. It's always fun to um, talk to someone who loves the Chisholm Trail like we do. And I mean, you just can't beat some good cowboy poetry, am I right? <laughs> it's always the best. I don't, honestly, your creativity and the way you uh, just, without adding too many words, you know, you just get right to the point on your the stories that you're telling. And um, anyway, great job. I'm, I'm kind of interested in reading some more of your poems, so. I'm going to look, have to look all that up. Um, so Ron, I, I, uh, I think it might be time for us to sign off and I don't know if you, did you watch any of the other trail talks? Did you get a chance to do that? Uh, I got to see Jay Snyder when he was on. Oh, okay. So, you know, whenever it's time to sign off, we always say happy trails together, right? That's good. That's okay. Good. So, uh, until, uh, next time then. I guess it's time to uh, get off of here. So are you ready? <laughs> okay. Happy, Happy trails. Bye. Bye-bye.